It's my great pleasure to be here at the beautiful city of Samara and University of Samara. At first, I would like to thank to uh, the organizing committee and scientific committee of the conference, especially to Professor Viktor Seufer and Professor uh, Svetlana Khunina for their in invitation. And also, I want to thank the organizing committee for their uh, for their uh, warm hospitality. So yesterday I was changed some, uh, some of some of my s slides because I have found here some people from data sciences and computer sciences and also uh, nanotechnology. But today I want to talk about the uh, structured light and structured electrons speci especially. Uh, at first, I want to introduce my group and my city. I'm from Iran, uh, from Ardabil city, a city in the north of Iran, from University of Muhafiq Ardabili, uh, from the Sabalan University College of Namin, UMA. These are my students at, at our laboratory. Uh, today, uh, I want to start uh, a talk about the history of light and also I want to conclude the, uh, about the importance of light in our life. It's a very uh, interesting diagram about the light from beginning of the universe to the, uh, to our, uh, oh sorry, um, to, to the, the f formation of the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang Theory for 14 billion years ago, and then formation of planets, planets, stars, and then formation, genesis of the humans uh, and ourselves. We all know, uh, for example, for 4.5 billion years ago, the birth of the Earth, 2.4 billion years ago, the genesis of the single cells, and 2 million years ago, the the uh, genesis of the human. After the genesis of the human, the early were humans and uh, from uh, the, these intelligent humans, the light was in the center of the process. This, 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 this is very important. There are some discoveries from, discoveries from, the, from with archaeologists which uh, the, the applications of the light in, in uh, in very ancient time, for example, in Chukov, Chukotin cave in China and also in uh, Lascaux cave in France uh, 17 years, years ago, there, they have found some, uh, some devices which used light, people used light in ancient time to making uh, uh, painting in some in, uh, dark places. This is a, an MP3 ver uh, version of uh, my presentation, which, uh, which shows the uh, applications of light and importance of light from uh, 3,000 years BC, fabrication of candle, in candle glasses in Egypt, observation of comet stars in Chinese by Chinese astronomers and Babylonians, recording the first eclipse to the build the first uh, first. Uh, uh, observatory for astronomers. Then, uh, after, uh, after that, the, by the history, uh, these, these are the, this, is the, this is the story of the light, which peoples, by the, um, entering the science and philosophy uh, to the human world, some, philosoph some famous ph philosophers, all famous philosophers, talks about light. And then, uh, also in uh, Islamic age, we have some uh, Iranian scientists which works in about the, about the lights. And one of the most important person was uh, Ibn al Haysam or Al Hazan, who was work, worked experimentally and theoretically about the light. The first photograph uh, photograph uh, was made by Ab Ibn al Haysam. He was the uh, founder of the. Uh, theoretic, some theories about, about the fundamental phenomena of optics. And also, um, after Islamic gold, short golden age, uh, some other people from Europe, uh, these, uh, you are 
all familiar with these scientists, Johannes Kepler, Galileo, and also uh, after 20th, 20th century, Isaac Newton, who was the, the first uh, introduced the particle properties of light, and Christian Huygens, the wave properties of light. And then in, in the 19th century, Thomas Young, Maxwell, and to Niels Bohr, to Albert Einstein, these uh, scientists work directly on the light. I, I skip this because uh, this is very a very special slide. So um, I gathered here the, some, the name of some people, the name of Nobel laureates, or directly connected with light. I estimated approximately 65% uh, of uh, Nobel laureate of physics are uh, get Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel Prize, uh, which direct directly connected with light. The first, from the first one, uh, Röntgen, Röntgen in 1909, to three slides. This this is one second slide. The, the people by no Nobel laureates of light and. The, ne the last one was three person who Arthur Ashkin, Gerard Movo, and Donna Strickland in 2018, who was uh, directly connected with li light, which they are uh, uh, get the Nobel Prize about the fascinating uh, area of the optical tweezers and optical manipulations. So I think this is sufficient for proving that light is important. But imagine light, life without light. Without light, I imagine this room without life. It, is, it, is in, it will be impossible because the vision is connected with light, the photosynthesis is connected directly with light, the generation of vit vitamin D and also uh, adjustment of calcium in our body is directly connected with light and also the uh, food and energy topics. Uh, yesterday, um, two great professor, Professor Hayashi and also Professor Nikitov, talks about two important uh, quasi-particles, one of them plasmons and the second one uh, was about the magnons. Today I want to again talk about quasi-particles of physics, but today is about photons and electrons. We are all familiar with photons and electrons. These are very important uh, in the point of physics, imp important quasi-particles which are working with this, uh, with which our, wor our world works with these two important quasi-particles. Uh, this, this slide is a comparison between two important quasi-particles, which as I said, uh, the first one is electron. Electrons have rest mass uh, and charge, spin one divided by two, and also photons have no mass, no uh, charge with spin one. Spin one is an uh, interesting story, but uh, today I am not going to talk about that. that. Uh, but the energy of the photon is, uh, is, is the visible energy of the photon is, is about uh, five, 500 nanometer, and the energy of the electron is about the, this is the This is the resolution differences between the same object which have gotten by electron microscope and also photon. Uh, microscopes mm, works with photons. So for um, understanding the structure of these uh, important quasi-particles, it's important to know uh, about the degree of freedoms which we should be familiar with them. In the case of uh, light, in the case of photon, four degree of fr freedoms are important. The first one is cr color or energy. Um, the second one is uh, polarization, which pro Professor Nikitov yesterday talked about, the spin up and spin down. 
And third one, are, we are interested for with it, the orbital angular momentum of light. And the fourth one, the radial mode or the intensity of the light. The quality of light and the quantity of the light. And this, uh, in the case of electrons also, uh, this is basic things. I think we all physicists <coughs> are familiar with. In the, in the case of free electrons with no considering, no relativistic regime, no uh, polarization regime, uh, we, if we have free electrons, we can solve the Schrodinger equation for the fr free electrons. We, we, we will receive the uh, Helmholtz equation. The Helmholtz equation here by, um, by uh, um, solving the Helmholtz equation in different, uh, for example, cylindrical coordinates, uh, or spherical coordinates, we, we have the answers, plan, plane waves, Bessel waves, Mathieu waves, and so on, the superposition of the, these waves. Uh, in the case of the free electrons, free electrons uh, which travel, traveling, traveling in the propag uh, propagated in the direction of, a z of z, we have uh, by using the uh, Schrödinger equation, we have uh, a wave, a quantum state, th this wave state, which by putting this wave state, by solving this wave state, we we have this equation. This equation uh, are familiar with the physicist which works in the field of optics. What's the name of the equation? It's the paraxial equation, yes. By, by solving the, these paraxial equations, we have the Lager Gaussian mode, Hermit Gaussian mode, orthogonal and com complete modes, and the superposition of these modes. So, um, this is color, the f first degree of uh, degree of freedom, polarization, the horizontal and vertical, and also two types. of, there are some devices which we can change the polarization, quarter wave plate, half wave plate, and also angular momentum. This is very important uh, because then, then I, s I, I talked about the Nobel Prize of 2018 by, by Arthur Ashkin. Uh, this is a laser pointer Using this, we, we know all types of light have optical pressure. And optical pressure means is force. This is, I, I am applying force to this bench using this laser, laser pointer. But I cannot push uh, this, any movement on the, on the bench using, why? Using the laser pointer. Because, because of the order, order of the force. The order of force, maybe I, for, for uh, replacing this bench from one point to another point, we, we need maybe 100 Newton. But the order of the force, which uh, here we have in this laser point pointer, uh, in the order of pico-Newton. But there are some objects, some micro-objects, which we can change fold, default, uh, replaced from one point to another point, look like very uh, small, small uh, micro-objects and nano-objects, nanoparticles, biological proteins, viruses, microbes. We can, we can uh, manipulate using optical pressure. And the, div the name of the device which people works, and we also in our laboratory works with with the device is optical tweezer. The, this is due to the uh, um, uh, orbital angular momentum of light. We can prepare, we can fabricate the orbital angular, different orbital, ve different veil defined orbital angular momentum of light using the uh, phase diagram. The, this one is a fantastic picture, pasta, pasta fusilli, which shows the mm, orbital angular momentum from the um, Lager Gaussian mode. So there are some other devices, for example, a spiral phase plate, which we can use using this spiral phase plate, the helical beams or vortex beams, orbital, orbital angular momentum. And this slide about the spin versus orbital angular momentum, this is clear here, a spin angular momentum, and here we have orbital angular momentum. Um, 
So, what is, what is the, and this is also other device, Q-plate, using Q-plate, we, we can also change and find, uh, fabricate orbital and well-defined orbital angular momentum for, for light. I'm skipping this slides, so due to the time. So, what is the applications of structured light? We can, for example, this is, this is just, this pointer have just Gaussian mode. We can change the, the mode of an orbital angular moment of, of the, this Gaussian laser to the uh, to different special using the special fu functions of mathematics Gaussian mode Lager Gaussian Hermit Gaussian mode Bessel mode parabolic mode and so on. These are the applications of uh, structured light and also structured electrons. The first one is co in quantum computation in optical microscopy optical manipulation. I said about optical manipulation which optical tweezer and uh, high dimensional entanglements in data sciences, classical communication, and quantum cri cryptography. Uh, one, of, uh, um, one of the most Im interesting devices which we can prepare, the, we can fabricate the orbital, well defined or orbital angular momentum for light, is a special light modulator. There are some companies in, in all over the world. To, fabricate the special light motor. This video projector generally is, is the special light modulator. We extracted the LCD of the, this video projector from the, and, and the LCD of uh, video, all video projectors can apply as special light modulator. Uh, by, by generating, mathematically and quantum uh, and compute computationally the face of this face of the different lights we can make and mixed and uh, with the superposition of different special functions we can find we can make a, a well defined orbital angular momentum for light and uh, i want to talk about the history of the angular momentum and from the basics, if, uh, for example, in this, uh, the, the, the la last slide was about the digital holography. Here we have, before the digital, digital holography, we, we had, uh, if you remember, in this, these are our desire in our country 20 years ago to have a Zenit, with Zenit camera, the Russian Zenit camera. And I bought the Zenit camera, and using the camera, I, I, can, I f nowadays I uh, fabricate some uh, analog holograms. For example, by taking some picture from uh, from uh, the screen of the computer, uh, we can uh, develop the, the some. Um, Gratings, some blaze gratings, some ranking gratings, and then we can fabricate both amplitude and, and phase uh, holograms. Using these holograms, we can have some uh, structured lights. So, I told about the. Uh, this is a, a typical. Uh, video simulation about the folding of DNA and biological object which with this uh, 1.3145 piconewton. I, I, I said that uh, the structured light is used for folding and defolding some biological objects which Arthur Ashkin works about, about these objects. By manu optical manipulation, also these have uh, some applications. So, this is Lager Gaussian mode. Uh, this is uh, the formula of Lager Gaussian mode. And uh, in, in the nature, in, we have seen the, in the face of this hologram uh, in the body of the zebra. 
and uh, this we uh, we can get the, this holog hologram using video projector from the uh, phase of the Lager Gaussian mode with the well defined orbital angular momentum. So, one of my interests, which I am one of, one of the most important motivation, which, which I am here today, to have a collaboration with the group of optics, computer optics of uh, Samara University. I, I have uh, reviewed the works of the great book of the professor Soifer and also the papers written by Professor Hunina and Professor uh, Kotliar. And um, I have worked on the, on the works, on the published papers in different journals. This is, this, there was very great papers. And I am trying to find some applications about, about the uh, published papers and uh, in, in the field of optical microscopy and also in the field of the optical manipulation or l trapping of mic micro ab objects by, by the light. These are some simu simulation which, uh, for example, in, in the case of Lager Gaussian modes, we have some uh, simulations and also experimental results, which, for example, this, this slide shows the uh, superposition of four Lager, shifted Lager Gaussian beams, who Professor Kotler and Hunina published uh, the paper in Physical Review A, and uh, we have superposed four of these beams, and this is the interference of the superposition and superposition of uh, four beams. This, these types of beams may be useful for trapping, for trapping of. of small nanoparticles. Here is the uh, calcu analytical cal calculations we have. These are the simulations and also experimental results. This is amplitude, this is the phase in different, we engineering, engineered the different cases. And these are the experimental results, also other parts here. We have the experimental results, phase, and also for different cases. Maybe this, um, this type of optical light, op optical manipulation, may be used for, opti I, I, told, I said, for trapping a particle, getting a particle, rotating the particle, and transferring particle from one point to other point. The second thing which we are interested at, and this is more interesting in quantum computation and entanglement, uh, the self-healing properties of these beams. These non-diffracting beams have, have self-healing properties. For example, by changing any, by applying any defect here, uh, by uh, propagating these types of light, we can, we can uh, see the uh, uh, self-healing properties of uh, these are we are all familiar with self-healing properties of, of light, but here uh, we quantified the self-healing properties. This by propagating of light, we we see the 93 percent self-healing uh, with Z 84. The, the quantification of the self-healing properties is, is more important. And also, this, these are also other, other works which have been done by Professor Hunina, which uh, the self-healing properties of parabolic beams. Mm, we are, uh, as you see, uh, we, we can see the self-healing properties for fractionalized beams also here. And also these, these are the amplitude diagram of these beams. So I, uh, I, I mentioned to the Lager Gaussian beam. Lager Gaussian is, is a well-defined 
beam structured light which have different applications but one of the uh, unfortunately this beam doesn't have self-healing properties the self-healing proper this is not uh, a good uh, self-healing properties but then we in in a work we uh, uh, we show that the, the superposition of two lager Gaussian beam can have good self-healing properties. But by the interference of two lager Gaussian beam, we analyze the self-healing properties of these materials. So the last thing which I want to talk about that one of the, one of the most applications of the structured light is in optical microscopy. I op optical mi microscopy, super resolution in fluorescence microscopy and light sheet microscopy, 3D interferometric mi microscopy. Fabrication of a structured light, uh, fabrication of very narrow structured light are applicable in these three fields. This is a, a setup which we have in our laboratory, Miro interferometric analysis. For these are micro channels which we have prepared in our laboratory. Uh, and uh, these mi micro channels, we can analyze the micro channel 3D imaging using interferometric 3D microscopy. Uh, you know, uh, and also we have uh, other, um, ad, we have other applications for this, these techniques. Interferometry is important. Uh, getting information uh, from interferometric pattern are, are also inform, important because we didn't have, um, for example, by ordinary microscopy techniques, we didn't have any other information but uh, any other 3D information. But from interferometric pattern and phase analysis and also using Fourier optics, we can get more information about the 3D micron sized and nano sized and also nano sized objects. It is, uh, uh, we all know it is not possible to see nano objects using, using optical uh, visible light. But there are some information which, for example, in, in our laboratory, we analyzed uh, the red blood cells, morphology of the red blood cells using interferometric uh, microscopy technique. Uh, red blood set cells have a donut shape and we have found some, some disease look, look like, for example, the fatty blood and the blood with sugar have, uh, have changed the morphology of the red bloods depending on the amount of fat in, in, inside the blood. So um, we can analyze the, the morphology changes in bloods uh, in comparison with, the, with healthy blood. Uh, and get some more information in comparison with ordinary optical microscopy using the, using the interferometric 3D microscopies. So uh, these are the pictures. So the, in the last session, I have time. I, I said, uh, I think I have time. Uh, I, I said yesterday I changed the slides and I want to start a different talk here about the nanotechnology if, uh, if some people, I, I, as I understand it, there are some people here uh, are interested with nano, nanosciences. My last branch was, was and PhD was about the nano, nanoscience and nanotechnology. Um, I, I want to show that here some simple techniques for preparation of nano, nano because of some restrictions in our, in our place. Uh, we didn't have any 
devices in it, in devices to prepare non uh, very uh, using, for example, MBE, molecular beam epitaxy, and etc. This is a very simple technique for preparation of nanoparticles inside polymeric matrix for applications, different applications for uh, fabrication of devices, look like solar cells, uh, sensors, gas sensors, and so on. For example, for preparation of uh, semiconductor nanoparticles inside polymeric matrix, we can use a cationic, pro cat cation, cationic solution here, an anionic solution. Uh, for example, 30 seconds we, we use the polymers inside the cation and then rinsing for three times each, each of time of 10 seconds. And then in anions, for example, cadmium, nano, cadmium ions react with sulfur ions here to prepare the cadmium sulfate nanoparticles. By changing, this is the first cycle. From here to here, we have the first cycle. If, if we can, we start to continue this process, the, the second cycle, the third cycle, fourth cycle, the gross this is the gross mechanism of uh, a semiconductor nanoparticle nanostructures inside the polymeric matrix. Uh, these are the results. These are the spectroscopic results. The, this here is wavelength and absorbance, transmittance. There are some interferometric pattern here. We can calculate the, the particle, particle or t film thicknesses using this interferometric pattern. And also we have here the film thicknesses using cross-sectional scanning electron microscope. Then we calculated the band gap of the semiconductor using this technique. This is the real materials, real polymer nanocomposite materials which we have prepared. Two cycle, four cycle, six cycle, and eight cycles of silar. By increasing the, the cycles of silar, the band gap are, blue, are red shifted. In the case of the uh, Two cycles, we have very small nanoparticles in, inside, inside the polymeric materials. And by gross mechanism, the, the band gap of the nanostructures, semiconductor nanostructures, uh, shifted to the, to the red, red region. This is the band gap of the nanoparticles. Uh, and the, for four cycles, the band gap of the nanoparticles inside the polymeric matrix for two cycles, and uh, also we have redshift here. This method is a simple method to control the band gap, to control the band gap or band gap engineering. For example, in some devices, we need a, a defined band gap, band gap, for example, in the case of solar cells we need uh, to engineer the band gap of the nanoparticles inside the polymeric. This is very simple simple method for to preparation. This then uh, I, uh, physicists are interested with the um, with the band uh, with the physics physics of this phenomena. This is due, this is depends on the quantum confinement of charge carriers inside inside the pol polymers pores. Uh, we all know about the particle in box. Uh, I have some theories here. Uh, for example, I show the models. The, m the most famous theory is, is uh, the band gap or the energy is equal the, to the kinetic term and Coulomb term and so on and spin orbit terms. And here, other model which, which has the hyperbolic band model, this is effective mass approximation model. We are model this, the obtained experimental results uh, using these te exist theoretical models. Uh, 
this, the green is effective mass approximation. It is, comes from the particle in box, general particle in box in, in quantum mechanics. Hyperbolic band model green and uh, the, the experimental, these are our experiment four, four cycles, our, our experimental results, results which match with hyperbolic band model. And also the stars are the, are the experimental results which we obtained from the literature. In the case of other materials, zinc sulfide materials also we have checked this, these properties. And um, also we, we um, have some other experiments on the surface. Maybe it, is, it will be interesting for Professor Sajin the wettability and the contact angle measurements on different surfaces by changing the uh, morphology of the surfaces and also the chemical components of the surfaces, we can change the uh, contact angle. We can engineer the contact angle of, of the uh, surfaces by, by different cycles of this, this method and uh, also, also we have ad other methods, uh, other techniques, which we are, we can uh, change. For example, by thermal annealing, by adding dopants, we can change the uh, contact angle of the nanomaterials. There, these are some electron microscopy images from um, the surface of the samples, and also. These are the atomic, atomic force microscopy uh, pictures, images from the samples. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I am at your service if you have any question. Thank you very much for, <laughs> for very much. Thank you very much for very interesting presentation. I didn't know that so much knowledge is about light. Already, so I think that we'll get some questions. Yes, please. If anyone has a question, please go to the microphone. Okay. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Uh, my question a little bit general. Uh, you you are using structured light, but unfortunately, I couldn't catch why you are using structured light. Is it simply? Uh, light wave propagating in different modes or, or, or other thing. What is the meaning of structured? Uh, okay. Uh, we have ordinary light. Yes. This is my, my idea, maybe here uh, in, in front of some professor which works on the field of the structure. In my view, we have, for example, light from the sun. Uh, this is ordinary light from the uh, <laughs> In, in this room, if this, these are all ordinary light with, with complex properties, with, uh, with different polarization, with different wavelengths. For example, in the case of laser, this is, this is just Gaussian mode, have Gaussian mode. If, if, if we draw the uh, intensity profile of this laser beam, this is Gaussian, this will be Gaussian. And we can change the structure of this Gaussian mode to other structures with mm. well-defined force, well-defined optical pressure. This is the mean of the stru structured light. Okay. Can I ask one more question? OK. Because you, at, at the beginning, you presented a lot of uh, history of light. And you included, included history of light and uh, you, you mentioned there are a lot of work done by Arabic scientists. But uh, you didn't uh, spend a lot of time. And so I believe it's a good chance, because I don't know very well uh, what kind of works have been done I in Arabic countries. So, so if you uh, go back to your slide, and if you choose one or two examples, which uh, gives us uh, uh, the idea of uh, excellent work in Arabic countries. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your comments. No, no. If you show now, show now or 
Oh, uh, mm. uh, sh show the, ju just the one work. or two examples. Uh, please please uh, give give me just one or two examples of uh, uh, yes. work done by Arabic scientists. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't have in a slide, but this, there are in in literature. For example, I said uh, one of one the Arabic, not just Arabic. It it it, it will be from Iran in general. Iran. Yes, mm. because. Uh, um, for example, Al Ibn al Haysam was from uh, Basra. Basra is, is a city in Iraq, just now. But at that time, it, it was uh, a part of Iran. And uh, one, one of the works which, which uh, worked by, uh, by, by Al Hazen, the, the fabrication of photographs. Photograph, oh, photograph. The first photograph was fabricated by. by uh, Al Hazen, uh, this I, here I don't have the, the photograph. I, if you can search on, on literature, you can find the first photograph. Mm. The, the year of 2015 was the year of light, as mm. you know, the, in honor to the uh, Ibn Al Haysam. Uh, the UNESCO called this year as as the year of light. Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay, I have a lot of questions about quantum size effect, but we will discuss later. Okay. okay thank you very much. Okay, we will discuss now. Any other questions? No questions, so I would like to thank you again thank you. very much for the presentation.